Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be deconning this Toyota Corolla here. It's in for the decontamination package, which is basically a full strip wash, iron removal, clay bar, and a very fine polish to get the surface buttery smooth. So, let's get started. This neglected 14-year-old Toyota has seen better days in its lifespan. Iron particles, lumber, tree sap, and a thick layer of water sheeting grime prevents this vehicle from looking back to its jazzy state from the mid-2000s. This wasn't the worst vehicle I've encountered, but definitely going to be a challenge with all of the iron fallout and that crystallized tree sap on the front bumper. In this video, I will showcase my process on how to decontaminate and prep a vehicle for a light polish. If you're a car enthusiast or a detailer, make sure to stick around to learn a thing or two. Or if you are here for the befores and afters, well, I'm glad to let you know that you were in for a treat. Videos like these take some time to record and edit, so please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, followed up with a like and a comment to show support for my crusade to be a successful detailer on YouTube. Other than that, kick back and enjoy the video. My philosophy on detailing is that your results are only as good as the products and tools you wield, how far you can think outside the box, as well as the skills you've sharpened, especially when deconning a vehicle because detailers need to understand the physical and chemical removal of contaminants to ensure a safe and efficient detail. Here I have a variety of products that I will explain throughout the video, so for my detailers take some notes if you are new to the decontamination process. Before doing any sort of rinsing, I've noticed that there were some logs stuck between the vents of the engine and the hood, so I stuck my fingers in to get as much of the twigs out as possible before being followed up with a leaf blower to safely blast away any loose pieces that would otherwise make an unsafe contact wash. There were also some between the rear glass and trunk, so same process of removal. Many detailing brands with videos of their own showcase their shampoo product with a water rinse and then foam the vehicle for a wash, but here, that is not the case. Because the vehicle was so heavily contaminated with grime and other fallout, on the dry vehicle, I snow foamed it with some diluted super clean at 4 to 1. It provides enough foam to cling onto the paint so it can break down any grime and loose contaminants. Now, I am certain many people will ask why am I using an APC first for the pre-rinse? Because remember, this is a decon. You shouldn't spend a lot of time rinsing with water that won't cut through grime. Because SuperClean has a high alkaline pH at around 12, not only will it cut through contaminants, but it is also a great traffic foam remover. Applying this on a dry surface will shred right through the grease and grime rather than running off on a wet panel. This method is extremely handy, especially for neglected vehicles like this with years of sins embedded onto the paint. Like I always said, let the product work for you, not you working for the product. After a bubbly soak in some APC, you can clearly see that the spent product is clinging a lot on the surfaces, making a large sheet of foam. This tells me that there are no waxes, and a thick layer of contaminants are sitting on the paint. Areas like the door handles, glass, and emblems, I noticed some dirt-like particles dripping away because of the cleaning properties SuperClean has. So, this is an indicator that the product is indeed cutting through the grime. After a moment of soaking, I rinse away and as you can clearly see, the paint is looking a whole lot better and I haven't even touched the vehicle. The APC foam pre-rinse is what I like to call the one-shot bomb, because this will cut through a vast majority of grime allowing for a more safer, yet efficient way of cleaning the vehicle. If I had went straight to rinse and foam the vehicle for a contact wash, not only would I jeopardize a swirl-free detail, but the wash mitts and detail brushes will be junked with contaminants that will be very likely spread all over the surface and potentially swirl or scratch the paint. It is important as a detailer to know that if you can understand how a product works from a scientific or a chemical standpoint, you can make your details a lot safer and use a less agitation in the contact wash. So more cleaning action and less back and wrist pain, which, if you are doing this like a business, like myself, is always worth it and very much appreciated. Yeah. 
Now I didn't intend to do a full deep clean of the wheels because the focus is on the paint, but I decided to give them at least a once over to make the exterior pop a little more with some tire dressing. Here I only use a wheel brush and a tire brush to agitate the cleaner, which is Adam's wheel and tire cleaner diluted one to one. Since this vehicle had not been washed for a long time, I went for a more concentrated dilution to give it extra bite on the tires. As you can see from the delicious chocolate milk, the cleaner is cutting through all that grime revealing a fresh surface to work on. I am aware of the product's cleaning capabilities, but just to play it safe, I sprayed and agitated it once more just to make sure that I have gotten everything out, and sure enough, it did. It's one thing that you work with a product for a long time, but it is another thing when you get a vehicle that you are not certain of what kind of contaminants are sitting on it. So as a tip for my detailers, on the first wheel, always do another pass just to make sure how much cleaner and agitation you will need to achieve a certain level of clean on the other wheels. Despite already had done the APC foam rinse, I go over the intricate areas with some all-purpose cleaner to clean the stubborn dirt hiding between the plastics and glass. Areas like the front grill, headlights, door handles, glass edges, and emblems or logos are common hiding spots for dirt and other contaminants. So with my boar's hair detail brush, I agitate it with some citrus-based cleaner onto the nooks and crannies where a wash mitt would have trouble getting into. This helps eliminate more dirt from surfacing onto the paint after you had done the contact wash and begin the rinse process. For vehicles with complex chrome or plastic trim pieces, it is common that the dirt would get stuck in between the gaps which can only be brushed or thoroughly rinsed away. So by brushing those areas, you can secure a swirl free wash during the contact cleaning. It is important to go over all of these areas before the contact wash because nothing is worse than going through the wash and dry process only to find a couple of eye-soaring pieces of muck just looking at you. If it's your own personal vehicle, eh, then skip this step if you like, but on a client's vehicle, missing one of these steps can give you a bad rep and could potentially dismiss you for future jobs with a client, so if you're doing high-end detailing like I am as a business, Get into the habit of double checking these areas to secure your credibility and reliability as a detailer. Next up is a bubbly foam bath for the contact wash. I liberally cover the whole vehicle in a thick layer of citrus wash and gloss shampoo for high foam dwell time, lubricity, and cleaning capabilities with the strip wash dilution ratio at around 8 to 1. I then get to town with a wash mitt to clean the area and then shortly follow it up with a light to medium duty clay towel to decontaminate the surface of any particles. I start in the glass, which didn't seem to be a problem at first, but as I work on my way down towards the hood, I begin to notice something going on with my clay towel the more I wipe it on the surface. As it turns out, the amount of contaminants that are on the paint far exceed what the clay towel is capable of. I rub my hand over the surface after a couple of passes of the towel and, unfortunately, this level of clay is not going to cut it and would be best to just iron decon the whole vehicle. I will elaborate the iron removal process in a minute, so for now I proceed with the wash as usual just without the clay towel. Do you need to clay every vehicle with a towel? Of course not. It was designed to be paired with the contact wash so you can take advantage of the lubricity from the soap to glide the towel over. However, a clay towel I would only recommend for lightly contaminated vehicles. Here in my case, despite passing the towel several times, it was still gritty, which indicates that there are some stuck on particles that a light duty clay cannot remove, so a higher duty clay bar or iron removal will easily do the trick. Either method is fine by bar, towel, mitt, or iron removal, they will not get the job done. It is mostly based on personal preference and the condition of the vehicle. Next up is the iron removal process. Now unfortunately I did not hit the record button of me spraying the vehicle, but luckily I can show you the paint's reaction to the Adams Polishes iron remover. As you can see, the whole vehicle turned purple with the worst areas being the hood, trunk, and roof where I felt the most grit. Why does it turn purple you may ask? Because it immediately oxidizes the iron particles embedded in the clear coat, which by natural reaction makes it turn purple. 
Using an iron remover is helpful for detailers because there are times where there are so many iron particles or some that are just too deep in the paint. That claim the vehicle will not only be time consuming, but you have a much higher chance to inflict defects on the surface. In my case, using an iron removal here is more efficient and safer to decon because it just eats away all of the embedded sins that are on this car which had collected throughout its lifespan. Not only is it visually satisfying to see it chemically clean, but less physical abrasion that my wrist would gladly appreciate. After the fallout remover had finally done its job, I thoroughly rinsed the vehicle. Now I cannot stress how important this step is. There should not be a single drop of iron remover on the surface of the paint because leaving it to dry can leave nasty paint defects or hard to remove streaks. So flooding the vehicle liberally with water ensures that all the spent product have been rinsed away for the next process of the detail. Now I did not mention this at the beginning of the iron removal process, but for my detailers, please get yourself a quality mask to breathe in because the iron removal chemicals smell foul. like nose staining foul. If I had to describe it, it smells worse than rotten eggs baking in the sun with hot grape-like flavored Kool-Aid. I have no idea how that makes sense, but that's the best description I can give. I was caught off guard while spraying some and the wind went in my direction and I breathed some of the odor in while wearing a face mask. So Please protect your lungs by wearing a quality mask designed for fine particles and don't rely on tucking your nose in your shirt nor using the blue masks meant for the pandemic. After the thorough rinse, I then snow foamed the vehicle specifically with some pH neutral shampoo. The reason being is that some iron movers contain thiogonic acid, which is the chemical needed to make the iron turn purple. Because acid is on the left side of the pH scale, I foamed the vehicle with some pH neutral soap to neutralize the surface for the next step of the detail. Adam's iron remover states that it is pH neutral, but for me personally, I want to have that peace of mind and be sure that I have a safe surface to work on. If you are going to follow the same steps as I am, you can use whatever soap you desire. Just make sure that it is specifically a pH neutral soap, so spray on the shampoo and rinse afterwards. Now to address the reason why everyone clicked on this video, the tree sap. Since it had not been addressed for a very long time, the sap had crystallized to a hard rock like texture which can for sure swirl or even scratch if not removed with the proper detailing methods. I will start with the least aggressive approach and work my way up. So I start off with some paint prep clay bar combo and unfortunately that didn't do anything. Rubbing the clay on the sap will just tear it to pieces with its crystallized rough edges. So the next process was a concentrated dilution of APC that is worked with a boar's hair detail brush. Again, that didn't do anything either. I bump it up to a bug and tarn remover and agitated it as well to see if it would have any chemical reaction. And again, the sap is still unaffected by the process. I then grand slam it with some more iron remover to see if anything would happen, and to no surprise, the sap was still intact. I tried the most aggressive approach with the magic eraser on the paint, and it was showing some signs of removal, however, at the speed it was being removed with a lot of agitation, it would take way too much time for the surface that I provided, and I cannot use this on the headlights because that would require restoration service, to which the client did not agree to. So if I cannot remove this using any physical abrasion on the paint nor headlights, what chemical can I use? Ah, now here is an interesting fact. By using some hand sanitizer with at least 75% of alcohol, you can work in the product with a microfiber towel or applicator pad so it can melt away the tree sap. Now you may ask, why hand sanitizer instead of rubbing alcohol? While yes, you can use rubbing alcohol at around 90%, the problem with that is that because it is a liquid form, it will evaporate from the surface a lot quicker and also since I am outdoors in the summer heat of Southern California, it will flash on me cutting my time short to remove the sap. Hand sanitizer however is in a gel form which will not only evaporate slower on the surface but it will give me a little bit more lubricity when working in the product. 
Also, because of the pandemic here in SoCal, at the time of recording, rubbing alcohol is a bit hard to get from a reliable, non-price gouging seller, so the only option I have left are gel-based sanitizers, and even though it takes a bit of elbow grease, it is still better than nothing. Speaking of elbow grease, as I work around the vehicle getting every sap from the front bumper, hood, and a couple drops on the roof, if you are going to remove some sap on the car, you are definitely going to get a workout. So if you're a detailer, make sure to communicate with the client ahead of time to see what needs to be done for an accurate quo and work time. This vehicle didn't have that many drops of sap, but on a more contaminated vehicle, you better do your morning stretches, otherwise the day after will be the worst for your muscles and in your arms. After a quick lunch break from wearing out my arms, I move on to the next part of the decontamination detail, which is to clay the vehicle. Despite an iron removal soak, there, are, there were some contaminants that are still stuck on the paint which may or may not be iron particles. That is where a clay bar comes into play. It helps remove any more stubborn grit that the contact wash nor the iron remover could get out. There are different clay methods out there with different levels depending on the condition of the vehicle. Since I had already deconned it with some iron remover and the remaining grit was from months of contaminants, a medium duty clay was called to order to ensure that the particles are removed safely without any marring. My lubricant of choice is actually not a dedicated clay lube, but rather Detail Garage's Wipeout Paint Prep. I know some detailers are watching this video and are probably confused as to why I selected this as a clay lube, but just know that realistically, any liquid can be a clay lube. Detail spray, spray wax, ONR, and even some soapy water. So really it comes down to personal preference and what kind of car you are dealing with. I like using a paint prep because not only is it decontaminating the vehicle, but also because it is a paint prep, it is also preparing the paint by removing any remaining oils, streaks, and chemicals on the vehicle for the next step, which is a polish. So by clay barring with a paint prep, is hitting two birds with one stone by making it more efficient and cost effective since it is one less chemical to own in your arsenal. Now for people interested in a detail, how often should you clay your vehicle? Honestly, that depends where the vehicle is stored and how often it is used. Vehicles that are garage kept indoors, only used I would say twice a week, you can pretty much get away with once a year. If the vehicle is parked outside every day and is a daily driver, I would say about once every six months. Another thing is to not cheap out on any clay service. I don't mean to throw shade at any of these businesses, but usually express car wash services that offer a questionably cheap clay bar tend to use aggressive clay to cut through the contaminants quickly, but leave the paint marred to absolute hell. I'm sure many people have seen vehicles like these in the streets and they look awful to the point where that even adding a wax will not do it any justice to hide the paint defects. Prices vary from where you live, so please use your best judgment and select a local detailer with good reviews, credible work, and quality products and methods to safely work on your vehicle. Now to ensure that I am working on a bare surface, I go over the vehicle once more with a paint prep wipe down to make sure no residue or streaks interfere with the polishing process. Now this might be overkill since I was already using a paint prep as a clay lube and the vehicle is under a canopy, but I just want to make sure that I can get a clean surface as much as possible. If you're a mobile detailer without a canopy nor shaded area, I think the paint prep wipe down might be necessary especially on a busy street or if you see a lot of birds and bugs circling around you, so use your best judgment depending on the area. On goes the all-in-one polish to smoothen and protect the paint. With the 15D8 polisher, I apply 5 drops on a 5 inch white finishing pad and massage the product onto the surface. Since this service is not to remove swirl marks, I can increase my arm speed and use a slower rotation on my machine, which is about second dial. The hood was pretty easy since it was a large panel, but on more curved areas with complex body panels, I used the flex machine with a 3 inch white finishing pad. Same procedure with arm and machine speed. Now if you haven't noticed, I sprayed some water on the surface and on my towel to wipe the finished area. 
Reason being is that this ceramics polish may or may not wipe off easily, so on the instructions, it says to use a damp towel to buff off any remaining streaks and to activate the shine polymers. So if you are immobile without any shade, this product is going to be a bit difficult to work with in direct sunlight. Not impossible, but you will need to work in the smaller areas and require a step or two to work in and buff off the spent product. I know there are debates of detailers duking it out with arguments regarding if clay barring the vehicle should or should not come with a light polish. Some say just clay barring a vehicle with no other service after helps cut costs and time, while others say following up with a light polish helps remove potential marring and smoothens the surface. To be very honest with you, there is no correct answer when it comes to clay barring steps and what you should offer as a detailer. However. There is only a wrong way, and that is to clay bar the car and leave a horrendous amount of marring all over the surfaces and to deliver it back to the client without addressing it. This usually happens with express or cheap details, since they favor cutting time by using more aggressive clay, applying more pressure, and using other poor and questionable techniques. Delivering a marred vehicle is always a no-no, and trying to mask it with a glaze is just disrespectful to the detailing community, and it pains me to drive and see vehicles with those paint defects on the street. So if you are new to the detailing business, I say add whatever services you want and upcharge accordingly, but do not ever turn in a vehicle with marring on it. Address it before turning it into the client. If you are looking for a detailer to clay your vehicle, just make sure you check for reviews, photos, and videos to see if their work seems reliable and are delicate when working on your vehicle. With the paint polished and protected, now is the final step of the detail. Here I use Hybrid Solutions Ceramic 3-in-1 Detail Spray. This will help remove any residue that may have been left behind and add a bit more pop to the paint. This will boost the gloss slickness and add a thin sacrificial layer of ceramic to the surface for the next wash of this vehicle. I apply this to the paint, plastics, headlights, and emblems, but not the glass because I wanted to dress it them separately. The application is just like any other spray wax, spray on and spray off. Using this in direct sunlight can streak pretty harshly, but with a water damp towel it can be removed with ease. Here, you, I don't have to worry about it since I have a canopy, so I just proceed by spraying and wiping everything down. And there you have it folks, a decontamination detail. Hopefully this video was helpful for anyone new to detailing or looking for more information on how to address their vehicle with similar issues. Tree sap is really difficult to remove, so hopefully this sheds light on the subject. I enjoy working on this detail because I don't really get a lot of hammered vehicles with many problems to solve, so being able to document and publish this for you guys is always a pleasure to do and I look forward for more challenges like these in the future. One last thing before I end this video, for my detailers, if you are going to use sanitizer for tree set removal, just remember to toss away the applicator or towel used because gel sanitizers crystallize when they dry up, pretty much killing the applicator used for it. Also, soak your towels in the correct detergent to remove the waxes, or in this case, polish and ceramic spray chemical to ensure that they don't cake up your towels. Keep that tip in mind to make sure that you get the most use out of your fibers. Alright, and that is it for this video guys. If you enjoyed it, please leave a thumbs up. Subscribe down below if you want to see any more future content like this down the road. I really did enjoy this detail here because I get to see the before and after of a full decon service such as getting rid of all the iron contaminants, that stubborn tree sap that was on the bottom bumper right here, and also we get to see how well it can be protected and cleaned with a very light ceramic polish. So overall, great experience for me today. So hope you guys enjoy this video. Stay safe. Have a good time.